Hi everyone, I'm Bia and welcome back to Cardiac Radio for Teens. So for those of you who don't know, Cardiac Radio for Teens is a place where teens can come together with other teens to learn about spiritist teachings and topics in a way that might be easier to understand for us and more explained um, to our circumstances. Because oftentimes um, when we're just watching a lecture or reading the books, it can be hard to see how this applies to our lives as teenagers, but it does. So our goal is to work together to um, to explain and go through the Spiritist Doctrine and understand it in simpler terms that that relate to our lives and what we can do now, right? We don't have to wait until we're adults to start reading all these books and learning all this information, right? We can learn now. So that's our main goal here at Critic Reader for Teens. Hopefully everyone is staying home and staying safe, and I know it can be boring to stay home, but that gives us even more time to learn. And I know a lot of us already have online classes, but if you if you don't, or even if you have a lot of free time now that you're not doing extracurricular things, that gives us more time to be able to learn about spiritism or just learn um, things about ourselves, right, that can improve ourselves, um, good things, good skills that we can learn to help improve our lives, right? Use this time wisely that we're given to really reflect, right, meditate on our lives, and see what we can do going forward to become better. So we have been reading through the Gospel According to Spiritism together, and we've been reading through it page by page, and for the most part, we're summarizing it, and we're not reading um, everything exactly, and if you want to go and read everything, that's great to supplement what we're talking about. So mostly I'm getting it, what they're saying, and I'm summarizing it so we don't have to read through every single word together. But for this section, we're on the introduction, section three. And in this third section, it gives some definitions for groups of people and words that were from the time of Jesus or before that, and words that we're not, um, that we're not accustomed to. So it's really important for us to go over this part because these words will come up later on. And we need to know the definitions because or else it won't make sense, right? Why is Jesus talking about these, this group of people? Why is he saying this about this other group of people? So that's why this is really important for us to, um, to understand these definitions. So for this part, I will be reading, um, word for word what they said, what, um, what's written in the book because I want us to get the whole picture of, um, of the definition of who these people are and what these definitions are. So the word that we left off on last week was Sadducees. So who were the Sadducees? And that's something, right, we might not know. And I for sure didn't know before I read this. So it is really important for us to go through this so we understand who they are and why this is important to that time. So the Sadducees, another Jewish sect founded about 24 BC, whose name came from Sadduk, its founder. They did not believe in immortality or resurrection, or in good or bad angels. However, they did believe in God. But as they expected nothing after death, they served him having in mind only temporary recompensation, which according to them were limited by divine providence. With these thoughts in mind, their main objective in life was the satisfaction of all physical sensation, senses. As to the scriptures, they followed the texts of the old laws. They would nor accept, they would not accept traditions or any form of interpretation. They put good works and the pure and simple observance of this law before all outward practices of worship. They were, as you see, the materialist, deist, and centralists of their time. This sect had few followers, but among them were some important pers personages, and it became a political party constantly in opposition to the Pharisees. So here we got right a good summary of who these Sadducees were. So they um, only believed in in this world here and now. And again, that they, they say that's kind of like the materialists of the time, right? So people who they believe they these people they believed in God, and they believed in um, right the power of their senses and all of that, but not in immortality, resurrection, or angels, um, 
So they only believed in God, but everything else was really um, materialistic. So everything that they did was kind of thinking about that temporary um, reward and just that material reward and nothing beyond that, right? Like we know that um, we might not be punished or we might not re be rewarded for something in this life, but in the future, that's still to come, right? We have to um, pay for all those mistakes that we make along the way. And if it's not now, it's going to be later. But these people were only focusing on the now. So um, the way that they viewed, right, these recompensations and everything was different to how we view them. Um, and another um, important thing that they say is there was few followers, but it became a political party constantly in opposition to the Pharisees. So if we go back to what we talked about last week, the Pharisees were few, two pages before this. The Pharisees, they were um, kind of like faking that they were that they had a belief, right? They more wanted to be powerful, and they were concerned about being powerful and using their um, and using this religion to become powerful and have people follow them, rather than really following these good ideas, right? They had some um, they had some good good concepts, but like they said here, it's an ex it was a a means to an end rather than an object of sincere faith. So we talked about this last week, right? So the Pharisees, they were just trying to get to that power. They didn't really have that sincere faith. They weren't really um, following it to follow it, to follow a specific religion to follow it, but they just wanted to get that power out of it. And because of this, when Jesus came and expressed simplicity and kindness and um, good qualities of your heart above everything else, they didn't like Jesus, right? Because that's exactly what they weren't doing. They were just caring about the power and the money and not doing things with the goodness of heart. And that's what Jesus was doing. So that's why they were opposed to Jesus. And the um, they're saying here that the, the Sadducees were against the Pharisees. So even though they didn't believe in... Um, they were only believing right in this life right now and nothing afterwards except for God, right? They did believe in God. Um, they were against the Pharisees and everything that the Pharisees were doing. And Jesus wasn't ag against the Pharisees, right? Like he wasn't mad at them. He wasn't like fighting them. But there was this disconnect and also like dislike of the Pharisees of Jesus. So we can see that the um, Sadducees might have been more in support of Jesus. And again, right, but they didn't believe in immortality or resurrection or anything afterlife. So again, they didn't, um, it doesn't say if they completely followed Jesus, right? They followed their own beliefs. And it doesn't say that Jesus was one of them, but it's interesting to see that not only were, was like Jesus the opposite of what the Pharisees were doing, but there were other groups that also didn't agree with what the Pharisees were doing. So that's just setting up the background, right? So that doesn't mean, um, and for all three of these groups that we're talking about today, it doesn't mean that Jesus was a part of these groups or had any affiliation with these groups, but it just shows how these different groups were intermingling even before Jesus or without um, the interference, right, of Jesus. How were they, how were these different sects before Jesus even came along? So the next definition that they bring is the Essenes. They were a Jewish sect found, founded about the year 150 BC in the time of the Maccabees, whose members lived in types of monasteries, formed among themselves a kind of moral and religious association. They distinguished themselves by their pacific ways and austere virtues. They taught the love of God and neighbor, the immortality of the soul, they believed in resurrection. They were celibate, condemned war and slavery, held all their worldly goods in common, and devoted themselves to agriculture. Contrary to the Sadducees, who were very sensual and denied immortality, and the Pharisees of rigid external practices and only apparent virtues, the Essenes never took part in the disputes which cause antagonism between the other two sects. 
In their way of life, they were similar to the first Christians. The moral principles they professed caused many people to suppose that Jesus had belonged to their community before he began his mission. It is certain that he knew them, but there is nothing to prove that he was related to them, so all that has been written to this effect is simply hypothetical. So now we learned about the, the Essenes. And so, again, the Essenes were another section of, um, right, another Jewish section. So, right, following almost the same principles, but split up into different um, little beliefs and little sections. And so this we see, right, it's getting even closer to what Jesus was saying, right? They um, taught love of God and your neighbor, the immortality of the soul. They believed in resurrection. Um, they condemned war and slavery. So they, and they said here, unlike the Sadducees, right, who were sensual and denied immortality. So they were only thinking about this life and the material things. And also opposite to the Pharisees. So, right, we have the Pharisees, you have the Sadducees, but now the scenes are something completely different, opposite to both of those. And again, the Pharisees, who just had these external practices, like really strict external practices, but didn't really have that much um, virtues, right? They weren't looking at all the virtues. They, again, they weren't caring about the true, that true faith, right? Truly sincere faith. They were just trying to have power. Um... So, contrary to both of them who were kind of against each other, right, in political parties, the Essenes never took part in the disputes. So, even though the Essenes had something completely different and different beliefs, they didn't take part in, like, fighting each other and being so mad at each other and against each other. Like, we talked how the Sadducees and the Pharisees were, like, against each other, right? They were constantly in opposition. They were constantly butting heads. But the Sadducees, right, because it says they condemned war. They didn't want these fights to happen. So they just believed what they believed in, right? They lived in their monasteries, monasteries, monasteries types, types of monasteries. And, and they didn't really care, right? They believed what they believed, but they didn't care about picking fights with other people about what other people believed. So, and then they say, because of how similar they were, um, their teachings were to what Jesus was saying, a lot of people think that Jesus belonged to their community, the community of the Essenes. Um, or that, um, right, he was a part of them before he, but, like, in a previous reincarnation or something like that. But they said Jesus definitely knew of the Essenes, right? So all these different groups, Jesus knew of these different groups. He knew of the Essenes, but there's nothing to prove that he was a part of that group. So, um, there's an actual, actually a footnote that says the death of Jesus. So there's a book called The Death of, death of Jesus that's written by an Essene talks about Jesus kind of being part, being one of them, being in a scene. But again, this is all hypothetical because there is no proof that Jesus was part of this group. So as much as people might think that and might say, oh, maybe, or it's really likely, there is no certain proof that Jesus was part of that group. But we can see how close their teachings were to what Jesus was saying, right? So the last definition that they bring, the last word, is the therapeutes. From the Greek therapeuta, formed from therapeutin to serve meaning, servants of God or healers. So these were Jewish sec sectarians and contemporaries of Christ, being mostly established in Alexandria in Egypt. Like the Essenes, whose principles they adopted, they also practicized all the virtues. They were extremely frugal in their eating habits, were celibate, dedicated to meditation, lived in solitary lives, and constituted a truly religious order. Philon, a Platonic Jewish philosopher from Alexandria, was the first to speak of the therapeutes, whom he considered as a Jewish sect. Esibus, St. Jerome, and other originators of the church believed them to be Christians. Whether they were or whether they were Jewish, the fact remains that, like the, the Essenes, they represented a link in the union between Jewish and Christian faiths. So, again, this other group, the Therapeutes, who, again, was not the same as any of these other groups, right? They had their own thing going, but um, 
similar to the Essenes, right? So they practice practicized all the virtues dedicated to meditation, um, and right lived in sol solitary lives, truly religious order. So right, they were truly sincere to their faith. Um, so some people said that these people were Jewish. Some people say that they were Christians. And again, there's no proof either way if they were Christians, if they were Jewish, whatever they may be, it doesn't matter. But these two sects that we just saw, the Essenes and the Therapeutes, it's showing that link between Jewish and Christian faiths, right? Because there's a there's that mix of both, right? They they have teachings that Jesus was teaching, right? These virtues that Jesus was um teaching that the Christian faith follows, but we're also considered Jewish sects. So we see this that's like kind of the link from how these um right this this Jewish um these Jewish sects kind of went to uh Christianity. So there is links, right? Because as we saw, there's all these different groups, but somewhere some of them get close to Christianity. So again, it doesn't matter which um which they were, Christians or Jews, but it is important to see that link, right? That those similarities because just because religions have different names doesn't mean that they all believe in completely different things and maybe some do believe in completely different things but some might have a lot of overlapping and a lot of similar ideas so even though someone might have a different religious belief there might you might still share common thoughts and kind common um virtues and things that you believe in and just like we see today, right, there's a lot of different sects of Christianity and a lot of different groups that, right, we have the same maybe um, basic principles, but then spread and, and grew into um, different different ideas. And again, that doesn't mean that all the ideas, just because someone's a different religion, doesn't, that, doesn't mean that all of their ideas are wrong, right? There might be a lot of common overlapping ideas that you share with someone just because, even though they're um, a different religion. So I think that's really cool to show that, right? That there are these qualities, right? In in the Essenes and the um, therapeutes, right? That we we appreciate, right? We don't want war or slavery or we believe in immortality of the soul and resurrection. And these people, right? The Essenes, right? Doesn't mean that we are Essenes, but we have a lot of similarities with them. So it's interesting to see how even though we might seem different from other people, right? We might have a lot in common. So I think that's a really important thing that applies in all concepts of our lives, right? And everyone is so diverse and everyone has their own beliefs, but deep down, right, we might have a lot of similarities that we don't see on the surface or by labels. So that is the end of the third part of the introduction. And I want to give just the first paragraph of the fourth part of the introduction. So the fourth part is titled Socrates and Plato the forerunners of the Christian idea and spiritism. So I'm just going to read the first paragraph here. From the mere fact that Jesus knew the Essenes, it is erroneous to conclude that his doctrine was derived from this sect, and if he lived in another environment, he would have professed other principles. Great ideas have never appeared suddenly. Those founded on truth have always had their predecessors, who partially prepare the path. Later, at the appointed time, God sends a man who has the mission of resuming, coordinating, and completing those scattered elements and uniting them into a doctrine. In this way, when the idea arrives, to find, it finds spirits disposed to accept it. This also happens happened to the Christian idea, whose protag protagonistic many centuries previously, before either Christ or the Essenes, having had Socrates and Plato as its principal predecessors. So again, it's saying to say that Jesus that Jesus was an Essene just because of the very similar ideas is incorrect, right? We can't just say, oh yeah, he had to be in a scene. But we know that big, um, like they said here, great ideas don't appear out of nowhere. There is foundation that's laid before these great ideas appear. So they're saying before Jesus, if Jesus came and no one believed in resurrection or immortality of the soul at all, it would be really hard to convince these people of that because they have never considered that at all. But 
there have been groups along the way, right, that start introducing these ideas. And when a figure like Jesus comes, he gets these elements that are already existing and kind of reinforces them and unites these scattered ideas to bring together um, this full truth. So it's not that Jesus came and said, oh, this is all it, and that was all brand new, and no one's ever heard of that. No, they've heard of little bit, bits and pieces, but now it was bringing together and uniting all these good bits and pieces that were all over the place, right? So we know, like, the Essenes had this immortality of the soul, condemned to war and slavery, and um, the therapeutes, right, practice all the virtues. So grabbing these bits and pieces that people already understood and uniting them and bringing them together. So... Even before Jesus and before the Essenes and all of these groups that we talked about, Plato and Socrates were the principal predecessors of Christianity. So Plato and Socrates started that setting, planting the seeds for Christianity so that when Jesus came, he would be able to get what was grown from those seeds and put it all together and unite those ideas. So it's really interesting, right? Figures um, that we know so well right we talk about so much plato's and socrates plato and socrates that they are right the principal predecessors they're the ones who planted the seeds that jesus will later take and use to create um to create this doctrine and spiritism right christianity and um more than christianity spiritism so that's really awesome to see and that's where we'll continue talking um next week talking more about socrates and plato and how they planted these seeds for jesus and for christianity and for spiritism so that's really um it's kind of crazy to think right how over time right something so little that they did right they planted a little seed here grew into what we believe in today so that's really cool so we'll be talking about that next week so the next, so the rest of the section four is, um, again, a little summary of continuing that little paragraph that we just read. And then there's a section that's a summary of the teachings of Socrates and Plato. So it shows what Socrates and Plato were teaching, and we'll see how that connects to what we're, um, what we are following, right? What teachings are we, um, reading and learning? And we'll see a lot of connections between this and what Jesus says and now Spiritism says. So, it, again, if you're really interested in it and if you have some free time and if you want to jump ahead and read forward and um, go over these things on your own. But if not, then next week we'll be back um, and we'll talk about all these things together. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, any um, information that you want to study more on while you have this free time, um, or even just coping mechanisms for what to do when you're bored at home, um, related to spiritism or not, right? We know we can, um, read these books, we can, um, meditate, we can learn, but there's other things, right, that are beneficial to us that we can fill our time, right? Positive things to improve ourselves. So, um, if you guys need any suggestions, feel free to email me at cardicgreedyforteens at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you right away. I'm Bia, and this has been Cardic Greedy for Teens. Thank you all for watching.